Yeah, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays the Bond and Does and This is Tony. I'm here in a garage standing half naked. And we're actually going to do a video today on growing so tall that is the genus Dacelerian from seed. Now, the so tall is related to agaves and yuccas. It's one of those monocots and asparagales, the order of asparagales. Big ass order, okay? They tried to do this whole thing with the taxonomy where they turned all these families uh, into subfamilies, lumping them together and asparagaceae, a much broader asparagaceae family, the asparagus family, which I, is a fucking annoying taxonomy. It's a really irritating thing that they did. APG did that. Anyway, we're not even going to get into that. The fact is, Sotol is becoming somewhat of a threatened plant in certain regions of Texas due to harvesting. Uh, you know, they harvest it for booze. To be called so tall, it has to be made in either the states of Durango, Chihuahua, or Coahuila. If it's made in, you know, Texas, that's Texas so tall. It's, it's not the same thing, you know? You can't make fucking bourbon in Maine, all right? Same thing. Or, uh, you know, or Florida or whatever the shit. Anyway, all that aside, harvesting can be unsustainable, given that it takes upwards of 20 years for a single plant to reach the age at which it can be harvested, and they grow immensely slowly in very arid and hot regions. And in fact, that only about... You know, you give half a bottle to a bottle of this booze per plant, you can see how you can quickly make this an unsustainable practice. So what I'm trying to do today is show people how to grow it so you can both grow it in your garden because Dacelerian is a fucking awesome genus. And also, so hopefully someone out there, uh, you know, in one of these companies can get a little bit of conservation minded and, and start investing money in towards propagating this species if anything only for their own pr so they don't get a battery you know what i mean because if it's if it, like every every person i've mentioned so tall to people are like oh it's a little unsustainable like it's getting you know it's getting words getting out there this isn't sustainable anyway i'm also going to use this video as an opportunity to hawk this product that somebody sent me for free which you know i I didn't really think I was going to do the video when I first got it. I just said yes because I like free stuff and I'm a WAP. That aside, they sent it to me. It actually ended up being pretty cool. It's the Beaver Lab M2 Microscope. And basically what you're looking at is a macro lens that can take both video and photo and comes with its own light. But it's a little bit more than just a macro lens. It can get upwards of 1000x. In 1000x magnification, you can put stuff in a slide using a cover slip. You can detach the whole freaking microscope itself from the stand and take it out into the field with you. So you could be looking at cool, you know, lichens or whatever the shit out in the field and actually take photographs. It's got these little buttons that capture photographs. Here's some photographs I took of some mosquitoes that I was torturing earlier today. I went and trapped them with the electric tennis racket <laughs> and then put them under the scope while I had it in the stand so I could interrogate them and also identify them. They're Aedes aegypti the invasive mosquito that spreads yellow fever. So I had some fun with them, took a gander, and then went and fed them to the carnivorous plants, the pinguiculas that I have under lights in my house. Now what we're doing here, we'll take a quick look at this thing so they can get off my back and not hound me anymore. But you turn this thing on, this is the microscope itself, okay? There's the lens, it comes with a lens cap. I want to keep that shit covered so you don't damage the lens. Turn this thing on right there. You get a little light coming on, you can control the brightness over here, you can control the zoom over here. It comes with a little stand. They send you a whole kit, which you could see here, you know, it's great for the kids. You got kids, my daughter and I were looking at bugs the other day under it. They send you the tweezers, they send you uh, the slide covers, uh, you know, slides and uh, cover slips and all that stuff. A uh, little thing to go get pond water. We got some water out of the nasty green algae ridden stock tank that I keep the mosquito fish in. You know the fish that eat the mosquitoes. Got all kinds of nice stuff in here, all right? Got you a little specimen box, just like the little taco box Alan Rockefeller carries around. And I even sent some stickers. Can't argue with that. It also comes with this book. You know, this they didn't even pay me anything for this. I should actually try to get some money out of them. Maybe I'll get Glenn the angry mech attorney on him. But they got this nice little book, observation record book. Look, and it came with this too. This is, I had this over by the nightstand because I was reading it to my daughter. You know, look, they got tardy grades. You know, it's all, it's, this is all part of the project of making America less dumb. A lot of dummies in this country, no offense to them. That's what's good for a consumer economy, all right? They actually condition you to be stupid because that's good for the economy here in this country. We don't want that, all right? We want, a, we want a society of intelligent people who have the resources and opportunities 
to learn. Everyone's got the potential, but not everybody uses it. And certainly not everybody has the opportunity. Anyway, this is a great resource. Look at this cool book. Look at all this stuff in there. They got stuff about plants, microbes, etc. Now, what are the practical applications of using this goddamn microscope aside from just looking at stuff and saying, oh, wow. For me, it occurred in the form of looking at two different kinds of sand when I'm making this soil mix for Dacilurian. On the left, I have sand that I stole from a golf course, which is a higher grade sand. It's actual sand. You look at it under a microscope, and I'll put a picture up right now that I took with this camera and then transferred using the inbuilt camera Wi Fi, uh, transferring it to my smartphone. You could see that this is larger grained. It's uh, generally actual quartz. There's a lot of larger grained clear bits. And uh, uh, compare this stuff with this sandy loam that I got for free when the city uh, was due to get hit with the hurricane and they were offering sand for sandbags. Now this is more of the native sandy loam, which is finer particled and has little bits of caliche that end up acting like a natural cement, which is very bad for plants inside this sand. So no two sands are alike, okay? And I, when I realized this, because I've already made a soil mixture with this and it didn't end up working too good, a lot of the a lot of the seedlings I put in there, the, you know, the, the soil was not drying uh, that quickly at all. It was very fine particle. The seedlings ended up hating it. It was like a cement, like a caliche. All right. And I was able to figure that out when I used this damn camera and looked up close at two piles of sand I poured out. Like this is the, this is the clear one or the better one that I stole from the golf course. And this is the sand that was uh, given away by the city for sandbags. Okay. But they look almost identical from you know when you're standing 18 inches above when you get up there with the microscope though you can see the clear differences anyway the point is mixing soil is an art in a beaver lab microscope <laughs> it's kind of a funny name sorry the beaver lab microscope really helped me figure out just what the hell i was doing and why one sand behaved much differently from another sand even though they look much the same uh you know when you're standing a, you know a foot or two uh, above them. You really got to get up in there and give the sand itself a rectal exam. I'm sure I'll find many more practical applications for this, such as finding, uh, you know, trying to see if there's mites in the soil or other insect pests or whatever. So uh, anyway, let's get back to growing Dacilurian, aka so tall from seed. Here we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I got the Dacilurian seed right here. I collected this. I just literally shook it off over a big flat piece of cardboard on a day that wasn't too windy and then used the cardboard to funnel it into the bag. I just had a piece of cardboard in my truck, you know, like two feet by three feet, whatever, you know, but uh, you could use newspaper too, whatever, or just shake it into a bucket. They come on these big flower spikes and after you can even cut the whole spike off from the plant and then uh, uh, shake it off, you know, over the bucket, whatever, and then you can use you know, the, the inflorescence itself, which again can be upwards of 10 feet tall, you know, to beat your friends or as a walking stick, whatever. Anyway, so I got all this this uh, seed, collected it in Langtree, West Texas. This is Dacilurian Texanum. And uh, what we're going to do is basically use a soil mix. So I got the seed. I'm not going to use this because this is the bad sand. I'm just going to dump that out now that I know how it behaves in a medium. I've got Fox Farm Ocean Force, which is a great soil, high nitrogen. It gives them a lot of nutrients, get it gets them juiced up. Uh, to, uh, you know, basically you want to get them out of that, that really, you know, fragile seedling stage, get them bigger. I've got the good sand from the golf course. I'm going to mix it in a bus bin like this and then dump it in these. I, I like to use these elongated uh, flower pots. You know, this plastic degrades really quickly in the UV. So you want to keep it under a shade cloth, like 30% shade cloth. But uh, you want to keep it out of direct sun because it's just cheap Chinese plastic. But that aside... You know, I use these these nice mixes because you got to remember, I don't want to grow them in small pots because the small pots dry out too quick. And where I am, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit for much of the year, 90 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So the larger volume of soil, the longer it's going to take for it to dry out. And when it's this hot, that's really good. If it was like 70 degrees or 75 degrees and, you know, those coastal California temperatures, I would probably use a smaller pot or a faster draining mix, add more perlite to it. But I kind of like it little bit of a thick mix. You want it to drain, but you want a thicker mix. I don't want it to dry out too quick. You know, places like Phoenix or South Texas, the shit just dries out way too quick. Anyway, we're going to mix our soil in this bus bin and then dump it in here and then sow the seed. You didn't think there could be so much nuance in different types of sand, did you? I'm sure some of you did. But anyway, look at that beautiful quartz sand with very little caliche or smaller clay particles in it. It's got a larger grain size for a sand. 
And uh, anyway, we're mixing it up in there. I just kind of feel it out. This might even be too dry. There's a lot of perlite in there. You can see all that white stuff. So I might add more organic. But uh, again, for these, these seedlings, and because it's so hot, I, I don't want it to drain too fast, all right? Because they will just, uh, they can dry out so easily. You know, 100 degrees, you got a pot full of fast draining soil, you know, in 100 degree temperatures. Even with the humidity, it'll dry out really quick. All right, that warm air just sucks up water like a sponge. Warm air holds much more moisture than cold air. So mix this up, give it a nice little massage, then we're gonna dump it in this pot. There you go. Poured it out in there, see that, nice. And now we're just gonna sprinkle that Silurian seed. This might be kind of thick, it might be kind of dense, but uh, that's good, you can separate them later. Once they get, you know, as they grow, they'll get kind of a bulbous base. And uh, that actually is a storage mechanism. They're storing some of their carbs and moisture in there. And once they get, I don't know, you know, sufficient size, you gotta kind of estimate it yourself. And as long as it's not hot as balls out still, you know, you want temps to cool off before you separate them. But once they get sufficient size, then you can separate them, pot them up individually. And I should have upwards of, shit, I don't know, uh, quite a few hundred so tall seedlings. And then I'll separate them. And after you separate them, keep them in the shade, uh, bright shade, but no direct sun for like a month. Give those roots time to regrow and heal because you're basically shocking them, you know. Uh, and then uh, and then you can acclimate them to full sun. And again, deeper, generally deeper pots. You, you know, save space by making them not too wide, but definitely deeper the better. You can use some of those paper tubes. They're like eight inch long paper tubes that are only two inches wide at the top. That's uh, what a lot of growers down here, you know, for fish and wildlife, etc., do. So I got these here. I'll sprinkle another layer of uh, mix on them, and then, then we're good to go. And another thing you can do, I like that this is actually a little bit bigger gravel size than I like, but you could sprinkle some gravel on them, and what this ends up doing, just a light layer, what this ends up doing is holding that soil in place when you water. Because unless you're watering with the mister, like a mister nozzle attachment, you could uh, disturb the soil quite easily, uh, when uh, after they germinate so this will help this will help hold it in place just acts as a nice cover a little bit So we'll but you don't want to put too much You know you want to put so much on that they can't germinate and again It would be better to get a smaller a smaller size like that that you know, that's ideal This is a little too big So we'll tag it that's text with the date and then we'll sew it right here And I got this under 50% shade cloth. It's much too hot to grow anything in full Sun right now uh, it's, it's especially, I mean, half the year it's like that down here. Everything needs shake off. So, uh, now we're good to go. So we'll see him start popping up. That's all I got. Go fuck yourself. Bye.